Coach, you know, other than you guys shooting four for 30 uh, against the zone, was the Heat doing anything uh, specifically well that made their uh, zone be so impactful today? I mean, you know, they, they, they pick up full court and they uh, fall back into it a, a few times. You know, normally after timeouts and uh, dead balls, if they're able to set it up, um, and they communicated well. You know, their activity, their shifts, and all of that. They, they, their, their defense, they do a great job of supporting one another. Um, you know, you know that's their MO. They're going to come in and play hard, force you to meet that physicality, meet that force that they, they, they play with. Um, and I thought, you know, at times, you know, I, we turnovers, we stalled out. It's something we touched on and shoot around this morning, but it kind of stalled us out. And what it does is, what a zone does, you know, it forces you to, to focus on the details in terms of holding your screens, penetrating the gaps, guys having to move and adjust to different openings um, where they can, you know, the zone is vulnerable. You know, try to get the ball to the middle of the floor. You know, just too many times I thought we're standing straight up with the ball over our heads instead of being in the three-point stands. You know, forcing them to get down in the stand so we can open up some passing lanes or even quickly making a quick decision to penetrate the gaps once the basketball was swung. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the film, definitely try to get better from it. Um, and kudos to them. They, they played a hell of a game. They shot the ball well late, um, put a lot of pressure on us. And, you know, we had some moments, but couldn't quite overcome the situation. Jarvin, just after the New Orleans loss, you know, some of the guys were talking about the importance of the home stand and you know trying to get right. What, what's the level of disappointment after you know, this kind of a game, and what's the message in the locker room after a game like this? I just think coming out being ready to play, man, not coming out flat. You know, um, we had, like I said, we had a good team session. We watched some film on ourselves yesterday. You know, that had we had accumulated over the last couple of games. Um, had some good dialogue. Had a good shoot around this morning. Uh, I just think, you know, not being able to, not, not getting discouraged, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, we have this thing um, where, where it's a new stat out called a limbo rate. And, you know, you have, you have to understand where, you know, it's, it's, you, you have to have a next play mentality, regardless of what happens on the floor. You turn the ball over, you're trying to make a competitive play, great. The unforced turnovers are the ones that really hurt you. We had 10. I have to go back and look at the film and see. I know quite a bit of them were unforced. Um, and it's human nature for you to get down and disappointed when those th unfortunate things happen. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, it's, it's, it's NBA basketball. It's extremely hard to win in this league. You have to really pour all of yourself into each and every possession or as many as possible. Um, and we'll figure it out. You know, it's it's it's, it's a lot of time left, but the time is precious. Uh, but we, we we have to get to it, figure it out. We will. Um, we'll, we'll we'll look at it on film once again, and see where we can get better, how we can get better, and versus any any defense, man to man, three quarter court press, zone, touch all of it. But it starts with us just being aggressive and assertive and making quick decisions. With the qualifier that you've had key guy out seemingly most games. Uh, yeah. What what do you think just with the different lineups and the switching uh, of that? Uh, how has that impacted things? And how do you how are you going to try to get to a point where you can find a consistency there? You know, for well, the guys we, we can't find any consistency until we get healthy. It's as simple as that. I mean, we got to get healthy. We got to get healthy. Guys got to, and once you get healthy, you guys got to get back in rhythm, and we got to find a cohesive unit, uh, a, a, a total cohesive rotation that we can go with when, you know, you're dealing with different guys being in and out of the lineup that frequently, it's, it's damn near impossible to find uh, uh, a rhythm. That's just r being real. Um, there's no slight on anybody. You know, we, we pride ourselves on making sure we don't send our guys out there to expose themselves to any, you know, major type of injury. That's what we stand on. Uh, but having said that, we got to get guys healthy. Guys, you know, it's those little nagging tweaks and whatever you have going on that we got to make sure that guys could not just be available, but available at a high level. And so we'll get healthy, we'll get better from it. Doesn't feel too, so great, but it's not supposed to. You know, and no one, I know me for damn sure, I'll speak for myself. Like, you know, I hate losing. I hate not being uh, assertive, aggressive in terms of uh, a 
attacking each game, uh, whether I'm coaching, playing, whatever the case may be. Uh, and so that definitely flows throughout my coaching staff and the organization and you know these players. We're going to see how we can best help them and, and, and come up with a solution. We always strive to be solution-based. Darvin, I have two, two of you. Um, to, to this point in this season, you guys have been um, conservative might be the word when it comes to practice time and different things like that, generally speaking, prioritizing rest and stuff like that. But when you see execution against his own defense like that, so do, do you have to kind of maybe, does this team need to get on the practice floor more often, especially in this chunk where you guys are here? It's, it's tough, man, because it just goes into my last answer. Health. You know, you, you walk in that fine line of trying to see how you can be efficient, whether it's watching film, doing walkthroughs, not exerting too much energy on a non-game day or the morning of a game day, so you can try to fill your cup up as much as you can to have the maximum amount of en uh, energy that you can have for a game. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a duality that you're constantly trying to uh, manage. But having said that, I mean, again, we touched the zone this morning. And I think uh, for whatever reason, we had a couple bad turnovers, and that may have brought our spirits down a little bit. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, going back and watch the film, I don't want to make an emotional statement or anything like that. I, I want to be on point with what I thought I saw. And so once we go back and watch the film, we'll try to get better from this tomorrow. And to the injury point, um, you know, Miami hasn't had Jimmy Butler right. like at much at all this season. But is it something where, I mean, you guys haven't had those kinds of, outside of Gabe, you guys haven't had those, and Jared early, those kinds of like big long injuries. And then Cam misses three and then is back for one. Rui, you know, misses five. Is that, do you think, what's kind of thrown you guys for, for a bigger loop than, say, last year? No, nah, we've been When blessed. LeBron missed three weeks. And yeah. Then, we, and you guys were able to find a rhythm without it. Yeah, we, we, I think uh, the multiples are more impactful than, you know, you're going to, you lose one of your big dogs, you're going to figure out how to try to manage without them. But, you know, Bron and A.D. both have been playing phenomenal this year uh, and, and continue to do so. And then when you have, you know, your key ro role players, your key rotation players, this guy misses three or four, this guy misses three or four, and they're happening like one right after the other, that's what makes it difficult. Because uh, we don't want to run those guys in the ground. I'm cringing here looking at the minutes that, that Brian, both, both Brian and AD had to play tonight, as well as Austin. And, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's tough, man. But, but <laughs> that's why we get paid what we get paid. We got to figure it out. You know, I'm, again, I'm always, I'm disappointed, but I'll, I, I'll be damned if I get discouraged. Like, we're going to go to work and, and see, really take a deep dive, as we've done here recently, and continue to do. Um, and see what type of solutions we can help our players with. But, you know, health and, and, and guys really coming out and being ready from the gate and not allowing a few mistakes to get us down. Um, certainly, inconsistency of lineups has been tough because of the injuries you mentioned. And, and um, one of the main guys is Dan mentioned, Jared Benner won't miss that a big chunk of time. But should him and LeBron and AD and AR stay healthy in the interim and you get Nilo back. You have a lineup that you you know went something like eighteen and six through the end of the regular season, through the plan and the first round of the playoffs that you haven't had a chance to go to really thus far this season. It, is that something that you can pivot to? Um, when you talk about consistency, Austin and Shooter around the day spoke about we just haven't had a chance to play with one another all that much, but that lineup actually has. Um, could that be a direction you guys come in. Absolutely. I think everything is on the table that makes sense. Um, and, you know, again, we'll look at it and hopefully, you know, we get D-Lo back pretty soon. Um, and that's something we could definitely see ourselves doing at some point. But, again, like, d -Lo's in street clothes tonight. So it's like, all right, yeah, that totally makes sense. And then various other guys – within that mix have been hurt. You know, obviously Austin has been available, Brian AD has been available, but those other two guys have been in and out a little bit. D'Lo has actually played a, a, a ton of games for us and, and been there and just for the sake of balance, trying to bring him off the bench has been good. But yeah, definitely, man, whatever makes sense. Like I said, we're here to explore 
no stone shall go unturned. We're here to explore whatever we can uh, to right the ship. Hey, Darvin. What's up, Melissa? Was there a team meeting of sorts after the game? And if so, what was your message to the guys tonight? Just being aggressive. Um, you know, taking care of the ball, not the self-inflicted wounds, you know, which caused them to get, you know, their juices going early. Uh, the turnovers really killed us tonight because, you know, 22 turnovers, 22 times you didn't get a field goal attempt. And so uh, just us, you know, the, the effort <coughs> and, and the force in which Miami plays with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's totally uh, highly respected, you know, by me individually and the rest of the league. And, uh, you know, you just want your team to come out and do the simple things in terms of, you know, attacking possessions, good, bad, and indifferent. You just got to attack each and every possession on both sides of the ball. And, again, you can't have self-inflicted wounds. That's the biggest thing. And so, again, we, we, we talked about it yesterday in our team film, discussed a little bit this morning in terms of focusing on them. And we'll continue chipping at the rock, man. We'll break through. Darvin, I just want to follow up kind of what Melissa just asked you. It took you a little bit longer than normal to come in here today. What was the temperature in the locker room after this loss? Guys are disappointed. Nobody wants to come out here on their home floor and get beat like, like, and, and not play well. You know, and that's the other thing. We, we, we need guys to play better. You know, we got to attack and be more competitive, but we need, a, we need guys to step up and play better. The reason we sign them is because we know what they can do. And so you got to come with that confidence each and every night, and you got to fight through it. Things not going your way, you can't ball up in the corner nowhere, somewhere, and go cry about it. You got to step up and try to see how can you best assist your team in being successful. If it's not the main thing you do, then you go look for something else to do. But all the while, your mind has to be focused on moving forward through the game and trying to get better and get stronger as the game gets longer. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks,